Hello, my name is Jim Donaghy. This is a presentation for the Recording It Ourselves event titled The Warzone Dialectogram, Graphically Documenting Our Punk Anarchist Social Centre. The Warzone Collective are a punk anarchist group in Belfast in the north of Ireland. The collective has existed since the early 1980s with a series of social centres, but this presentation focuses on the Little Victoria Street Centre which opened in 2011 and is especially concerned with the eviction and demolition of the space in 2018. I've been having some tech trouble, so I haven't got a camera at the minute, hence the little cartoon version of myself doing the talking. It's not the most flattering caricature, but I don't think it's meant to be, but hopefully it's better than nothing. This is an overview of what I'll be talking about over the next 15 minutes or so. The picture to the left hand side is the front door of the Warzone Centre with the stairs leading up to the gig space. The dialectogram has a real focus on space so I want to foreground that bricks and mortar emphasis. I'll explain a bit more about what a dialectogram actually is in the next slide before going on to talk about methodological fit. In Carissa Honeywell's new book on anarchism she stresses that for anarchists the process of doing activism or whatever else is just as important as the outcomes. This goes for anarchist-informed research too, the process matters. To that end, I'm borrowing the concept of methodological fit from the world of business studies, but don't worry, I'll be giving it a punk and anarchist spin. I will talk about making a dialectogram as a method of doing research, and I will discuss that through four types of methodological fit. They are practical fit, aesthetic fit, ethical fit, and objective sharing fit. And I'll finish by asking, so what? I think this is the most important question we can ask when doing critical research and I'll reflect on the dialectogram as research method in the context of punk and anarchist research and suggest why methodologies like this are really important and really useful in terms of documenting our own social movements and cultures. So what is a dialectogram? In the image on the left you can see Mitch Miller who originally developed the dialectogram approach during his PhD studies at Glasgow University of Art. A dialectogram is a large A0 size floor plan of a space or a building which is inscribed with the social life and social history of that space. Mitch's work has included the Red Road Flats in Glasgow before they were demolished, the Occupied Students' Union at Glasgow University and numerous other marginal and at-risk spaces. You can see some of his work in the images on the right, but it's hard to do such large documents justice on a computer screen. They're very densely packed with detail and they're really fascinating to look at. I came across some of Mitch's work at the Museum of Modern Art in Glasgow several years ago and I was inspired to take the idea and try it out with the Warzone Centre in Belfast. Mitch was very supportive of my theft of his idea and we invited him over to the first exhibition of the Warzone Dialectogram in 2019. Our deployment of the Dialectogram approach was slightly different to Mitch's. Mitch, as a socially engaged artist, tends to take the role of sole artist and produces the whole thing himself after engaging with the local community in the space. For the Warzone dialectogram we were able to be much more co-productive and collaborative and up to a dozen people were actually involved in producing the physical dialectogram with many more people contributing with interviews. As with Mitch's approach the Warzone dialectogram was produced in the space it represents. This is the first example of practical fit. It meant that people who were dropping by the centre could become involved in the dialectogram process to whatever degree they liked So there was a degree of openness, flexibility and inclusivity. It's also really useful for conveying a sense of the space. All you have to do is look around and pull the details from what you see down onto the page. The Warzone Collective includes a lot of creative people and artists working in numerous media, tattooists, graffiti artists, cartoonists and so on. And so the dialectogram was a good practical fit with that creative practice. And because we could use a real mix of methods, various artistic approaches could be included. We have some examples in the images here. People reproduced graffiti from the walls, there are caricatures and cartoon strips, sketches of parts of the building. But even for people who are less comfortable with drawing, we had people cut out bits of gig posters and stick them on, and there's even a rubbing from the brass plaque at the front door of the centre. So people could participate directly across a range of media. Being situated within the space and the flexibility around contribution styles also helped to recreate the aesthetic of the space in the dialectogram. 
The visual aesthetic was most evident in the graffiti reproductions. The dialectogram looks like the Warzone Centre. People added contributions to do with the feel of the sticky floors, the smell of the pin juice, the colour of the vomit in the toilet and sinks. And because it's drawn directly onto a piece of mount board, that porous material absorbed the smell of the space too. So this document looks and even smells like the space that it represents. At the first exhibition in May 2019 at the PS Squared Gallery in Belfast, we kept that aesthetic fit going with the food, supplied by Live Deliciously, who began doing vegan food at Warzone Centre events. Instead of the usual exhibition plonk of Chablis or Merlot, we had Buckfast, and we had the local punk brewery Farmageddon supply the beer. And of course, we played music by Warzone bands at the exhibition, so we had the look, the smell, the taste, and the sound of the centre at this exhibition. Ethical fit is really important. I've already highlighted the anarchist emphasis on research process, and of course that's something important to the Warzone Collective as anarchists. In the past, they've had journalists from Vice or the Huffington Post coming in and writing stories that the Collective felt did not properly represent them. This approach is about avoiding that exploitative, extractive approach that comes through in the co-production and collaboration, and the dialectogram is a great way to present a collective identity. Dialogue and even conflict can be contained within the document. There are quotes in there that disagree directly with one another, so people's differing perspectives can be presented at the same time without privileging one viewpoint over another. Mitch Miller calls this an unruly parliament of lines, and because of the large scale and dense detail of the dialectogram, it invites a non-hierarchical reading of the document. It is hung on the wall at eye level, and people are absorbed into different parts of the dialectogram, and they move across the document in unique ways. So no two people will look at this in the same way. They'll be drawn to different elements, they'll spend a shorter or longer amount of time looking at it, and we as the document producers don't have any control over that. For the exhibition, we extended this density with a salon-style display, including portrait photos taken in the centre by photographer Billy Woods, which you can see in the images here. The dialectogram shared two objectives with the Warzone Collective in the summer of 2018, and they were shaped by the imminent eviction and demolition of their building. These were the need to create a social history of this at-risk space, and the need to get across a critique of gentrification and the neoliberal takeover of Belfast City Centre. The image on the left here is a t-shirt made for the final Warzone Fest in late summer 2018. It reads, Fuck Gentrification at the bottom, and the image on the right is the front of the Warzone Centre, with graffiti reading, Fuck Landlords. The dialectogram builds on that visceral, immediately felt opposition to gentrification. These two images give a real sense of how gentrification has swallowed up this punk space. The image on the left was taken from the top of the back steps at the Warzone Centre. You can see the new glassy buildings, some still under construction. And then on the right, from a few months later, the demolition crew moved in and the two-storey 20th century red brick was levelled to be replaced with a 10-storey block of student flats, no doubt looking exactly like the new buildings around it. The blandification of the city centre continues. We produced a smaller A2-sized version of the dialectogram as a zine, so the social history of the space and that collective identity expressed by the Warzone Collective is communicated to the wider world. We also had two exhibitions, and there is an interactive version of the dialectogram online as well. There are some copies of the zine left. You can get them from Black Fox Books for £1.50, and all the proceeds go back to the Warzone Collective. I'll share the link. The zine format ties into the practical and aesthetic fit, being a prime punk communication media, and there is an ethical significance here too, because in addition to providing a social history and a critique of gentrification, it materially benefits the Warzone Collective as well, and the money raised might even contribute to the opening of a new centre someday. Who knows? On the back of this, we included an essay titled Fuck Nostalgia, Fuck the Conflict, Fuck Sectarianism, Fuck Gentrification, which ties the neoliberal development of Belfast City Centre to the post-conflict peace. And this is a very particular version of peace, where the room for alternative viewpoints and alternative spaces like the Warzone Centre is being squeezed out. So what? Marian Bastani, former coordinator for Maximum Rock and Roll, the popular US-based zing, sums up the need to record it ourselves in the punk scene. As she puts it, when it comes down to it, if we don't write and critique our own history, it is only a matter of time until other people attempt to do this for us, which is definitely happening. Great, that's exactly what we're talking about, but, she continues, I understand the argument, but I am still wary. The wariness is of exploitation of punk, especially by academics. 
And that's where the concept of methodological fit is so important. I think that everyone joining this event will likely agree that documenting our own histories, movements and scenes is important, but we still run the risk of replicating the exploitative, extractive practices of mainstream journalists and traditional academic approaches. The process matters, and I hope that this discussion of the Warzone Dialectogram gives you an idea of why it matters and some of the ways we can think about research processes so we can do better at recording it ourselves. Thank you for watching and listening. I look forward to your questions and comments. Feel free to contact me at this email address, jim.donohay at ulster.ac.uk, and I leave you with the reference and website links. What's up, what's up, what's up?